Hello everybody, welcome back to yet another video regarding Arcane and understanding film production. Taking scenes from movies and shows and analyzing them to the point of learning film production. I am yet still a believer that if you can analyze scenes from shows or movies and know what you're looking for, well, you can actually start learning things Every time you watch a piece of media, you can start learning the filmmaking craft. And so what we're here to do today is that very thing. We're going to be looking at a scene from the show Arcane. And what we're focusing on today, we've looked at lighting, we've looked at rules, we've looked at all kinds of stuff in previous videos. But today we're going to kind of see if we can analyze the idea of what setting is. We've all heard the term setting in film. Well, it's an actual film term. It's an actual production term. And what we're doing is we're going to be looking at a scene and helping us understand that. So right off the bat, I want to give you guys a definition of what setting is. Those elements within the frame that function to, de to depict space, place, and time period. With that in mind, we're gonna go ahead and look at this scene. This is the scene in Jinx's lair. Silco comes in because there has been some enforcers that Jinx has happened to kill, and he's upset. So let's go ahead and start off. Okay, so right off the bat, the music sets a specific vibe for the setting itself. It kind of before it shows us a big wide shot, which we'll get to in a second, it's kind of already introducing us to what's the vibe of this. This might be something that feels like Jinx. All right, and this is an establishing shot of Jinx's lair, which is honestly a super cool, wacky, dark place that she spends most of her time. She does her inventions here. She does her art. And we know that this is her lair for a couple reasons. First, let's look at the color, the tone of things. Well, it's very green. And we know that the show associates green with the lanes, you know, the undercity. It's, it has this toxic fumes in the air. And they depict that through the color green. So we see that there's green, so we know it's in the lanes. We know that this is Jinx's lair because not only have we seen it previously, but we're back to seeing a big establishing shot with all of this art, this sort of neon glow-in-the-dark art that she does a lot of. And so before it shows actually a close-up of her, we kind of know this is her lair. We're in her space. Okay, we got Soko entering the space. Okay, so I I really like how it how it brings Silco into the space. It's just confirming what I had said earlier. We are in Jinx's lair and it's very much her. Her space is her. And we've seen this previously in, in other episodes from the show, but if you were just to enter into this scene, which some of you might be, if you haven't seen the show, this might be your first time seeing this scene. Well, this is her vibe. You have all of this art she draws on things. It's a mess, it's loud, it's, energy almost manic energy because she's manic a lot of times crafting she's building weapons probably and so he enters her space so as far as setting goes we do know the place we do know the space it's her lair it's in the lanes so let's go ahead and keep watching if we can get an idea of the time period the next part of the setting half a dozen enforcers dead enforcers dead yeah Okay, so this is already, even in the dialogue, we're understanding when this takes place. The time frame of when this takes place. So if you watch part of the other show, we know that when this happens is a couple of things. But as of right now, we know it is after, probably right after, Jinx had killed a dozen enforcers from topside. And so there's... A sense of time. I mean, this seems to be fresh to Silco based on how he's reacting. He's just learning about it. So we're getting an idea for time inside of the writing of this scene. Let's keep going. Building blown to pieces. Oh. 
Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any idea what you've done? Actually, I do. Okay, so we have the Hextech Crystal. And so this also is letting us know at what point in time. If you know from the show, the original Hextech technology, there are other things like Jinx is older, she's with Silco. These are cues as to when this is taking place. But this is also a cue because this is the modern version of the Hextech, essentially. These crystals were, they were more jagged, they were more rough, they were more unstable at the beginning of the show before it jumps years later. And so she holds this up. She knows, we know two things. One, based on the time frame, she killed a dozen enforcers. Silco just found out. And now she's revealing this Hextech crystal. It's the new one. And so we can assume this is like, we make the connection. She killed enforcers to get the crystal for Silco because it's what he wants. And she's like, I can just go get it for him. So we know in context of the story, this, based on if we just had this scene, we kind of know exactly where this scene, this conversation between them is taking place inside of the story. Are you starting to understand a little bit of how to define the setting in a scene? It's, it's a little bit what you're showing visually. It's a little bit of how it's written, and it's a little bit of how characters are interacting and what characters know about each other and about the plot, essentially, that either has or hasn't taken place yet. I also want to point out, this is not so much setting, I want to point out, I've noticed this show does a great job at show don't tell. They don't give us a whole lot of dialogue unnecessarily. So I'm actually going to rewind a little bit. We're just assuming that Jinx killed these enforcers that she was the one who did it based on his reaction. Now, if you watch a show, you know that's correct. But if you didn't watch the show, you can kind of make the same assumption, right? They never said, you killed all these people. Silco never, never addressed her to be the one at fault here. He is just expressing emotion and he is saying fact. They don't even say the term hex crystal in this scene, hex tech crystal or anything like that. She just holds it up and the whole mood shifts. And so this show is crazy good at telling a story visually mixed with the minimum, but just the right amount of dialogue and communication between characters. For pieces. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have any idea what you've done? Actually, I do. <laughs> Happy progress day. Again, it's just another little moment to show unnecessary but manic excitement energy that you only get inside of Jinx's lair because this is crafted by her. Like this is an unnecessary bit of what she just did, but it's fun. It's visually interesting and it's setting the tone for who she is as a character and what her space is to her. Notice the music here. It's very ominous, almost like, I don't know. Let's just back that up just a second. Just really pay attention to the music here that we get a vibe for it. Jinx inside of her own space. Mm. Another interesting part to this is we know that there, if you watch the show, and this is a little bit of a spoiler, between Silco and Jinx, there's contention that's created later on in season one. And so we also know, based on this scene, if you watch the scene, you have no idea where it was, but you know kind of what happens in the season. You can watch the scene and know, well, they're still on good terms. She still sees him as her almost emotional protector, her provider her father in a lot of ways that kind of took the place of vander earlier in the season this reinforces even the body language the relationship between them this all reinforces the setting which is the place 
the location roughly so like the play the scene inside the space or the space in the place and then also the time period and these this is like a basic understanding of what the setting is that if you can go a layer deeper you can also say there are some props so if you were to define props it's what characters physically interact with in a scene and so props can also dictate what period of time the setting that this is in so exam for example the hex tech crystal that silko's holding there that's a prop that it reinforces the setting if you ever read a screenplay at the top it'll say like interior night i don't know maybe some characters names raining this is setting up the setting a little bit and then you get into the details of when and where this is happening um it's understanding and the cool thing is we can look at scenes like this and backtrack reverse engineer the planning that went into even quick scenes like this i believe this scene is only a minute and 14 seconds a minute 13 seconds yet so much thought and preparation was put into this i mean they could have taken the easy way and just done something lazy with the writing and say why did you kill all those reinforcers they didn't really say that he just said this is a fact through the body language and the relationship we understand what happened that's great writing it's setting up the setting perfectly, and it's cool because the setting kind of lives inside of the scene. Without realizing it, without defining it, you just kind of take it at face value. But when you point it out and you try to understand it, well, then you can get a better idea of what filmmaking, crafting a scene, telling a story is like. Then you can imagine yourself in the writing room making these creative decisions people, the creators of Arcane, made to prepare this wonderful show for us. Just for funsies, before I close this out, let's go ahead and rewatch. I, I really like this scene. I just love the vibe of it. I wanna watch this end bit again with the ominous and then the the hug and everything. It's just a beautiful scene. Let's, let's watch it one more time. <laughs> Happy progress day. Man. That just hits different. I don't know why. That turn was heavy, but it made sense. Silco's emotion made sense. So thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you enjoyed it, I want to invite you to watch a week early. And by that, I mean... This is a part of the Wacky Wonderful Show. This is a clip that we all, well, it's either inside the Wacky Wonderful Show or you're watching a clip on our WiseWorks Studio channel. Either way, you can watch content like this a week early if you join us on Patreon. We're looking for support to keep doing videos like this and a podcast that myself, my friend Wyatt, my brother Josh, we do every single week. And um, we just love talking about stories, films, and giving our nonsense ideas every single week for hours. So thank you so much for watching. Consider supporting us on Patreon. The link is in the description. And subscribe to the channel, like the video, and tell me what you thought about this scene and maybe something that stood out to you, some thoughts that you have. I really appreciate you watching, and we'll see you in the next video.